Hi, my name is James Vincent, one of the piano teachers at Vincent Music. I'll be taking a, a tutorial today on In the Hall of the Mountain King by Edvard Grieg, an arrangement. Um, this is from a great book. I used to play piano. It's pretty good for adults actually, who used to play piano and they're getting back into it. Highly recommend it. A lot of likeable pieces and songs and tunes and stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of uh, maybe yeah, a lot of kids might know this from the Troll soundtrack that was around a couple of years ago. Um, let me play it through first, and then we can take you through it. What have we got here? change over the piano, you'd be jumping from this low octave to a sort of a G minor position. A lot of the time with your third fingers on the black notes there. And you know moving up there, moving up there, and finally up to there at bar 28. And it gets gradually builds, the dynamic goes from really quiet to really loud. Let's see if we look at the, the left hand first. So it starts, you've got that tune, the main theme, it starts to the left. There's a little bit of a, a rethink of that melody there. Um, and just some things to watch for is that second finger. Here, would move from C to C sharp. And your fourth finger also moves to A flat, so you get this kind of movement. Two four there, two four there. That's the first thing you get your head around. There's a little change in the fourth bar, and the thumb tucks under. Two black notes, two and four. Then the theme continues again on the right hand, one octave higher. Same thing, four on the C sharp, four on the C. And you've got a new kind of twist to that theme there. Repeats again on the, the third line, you're doing that same, same melody again. Then the third end, you get this kind of B section. You're almost in some sort of D major key here. Sound with a dark, dark edge, edge of dark tinged edge. Repeats again, bar seventeen. Back to the theme, twenty-one. Repeating that part of the theme, then you're up an octave at bar twenty-five. Right to the climax. Last little melodic fragment. Come down an octave, do it again. Finish it off. Getting quieter for a little bit of a twist. Um, that's pretty simple. I recommend you could do that whole. I recommend learning the theme part by part all the way through there because it all kind of ties together quite nicely. 
Um, and then if we look at the left hand, we've got a G minor position. It stays there. So from bar five, it, at the very beginning you play the theme, but at bar five, we'll switch to the just the one, five, five of the scale, back and forth, nice and light, nice and staccato. Then at bar, bar eight, you move to the B flat position. Pinky on B flat, thumb on F. That's two sets of fifths, really. Fifth on G and B, moving to fifth, B flat and F on bar eight. And then it repeats again, bar nine. Carrying over the idea of a fifth, but you're on D now. D three, fifth, bar fourteen. Just move slightly up to the B flat. Get a minor six. I like it. Reminds me of that split ends I got you. Line and um, bar seventeen. You repeat it again. Bar twenty one. You're back to that first thing. I guess the exceptions where there's no staccatos, you can make those long notes quite a thing. So like for the example, the end of the theme, at the bar four, you've got that minimum on the D. You definitely make sure you make that long for the to give it variety there. When you're at bar 13, da, 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 that right hand is 5, 2, 4. That's a little odd, a little tricky to get your head around, so just watch out for that. So, surprise too, your hand compresses just for a second. 5, 2, and then opens up to 4. Very subtle. It'll be tempting to go 5, 3, 5, but then it's not as easy to move up to that 5 on the B flat that's coming up. That's why the, the fingering change happens. Five, two, four. And you can do the rest of it on those fingers, then move back. Five, two, four. Oops. Um, so that's different. They're, yeah, they're the main things about it. Uh, you've got, yeah, you've got all those sh dynamic shades which are worth exploring. You know, how quiet is piano? How quiet is quiet piano? How quiet is mezzo piano bar nine? Just a little bit more. How loud is mezzo forte at bar thirteen? It warms up. Louder, but not too loud. Um, and finally, bar twenty-one. You've got that dynamic crescendo. Mezzo forte moving to forte at twenty-five. Sounds more like. That's, that's it, just for climax of the piece there. Um, yeah, and I guess it's also, you've got to be careful not to speed up too much. Although, from memory, I think the real piece actually does speed up. But there's nothing indicating it here. So it should be set at the same speed all the way through. 
And get yeah, right the last bar, what's your A, B, A, sign of the end? Means to drop it off the lower. So, yeah, there you have it. Uh, it explores quite a range of things, this piece, in the Hall of the Mountain King, from the Pig and Sweet. So, there's other pieces from this, like Morning, you might know. Um, you know, Sweet is like a group of, a group of pieces that he wrote. So anyway, um, hope that was useful and I'll catch you next time.